Great to see you. The church, the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, that's us, and we're here together. Um, Isn't it exciting? You know, already we have experienced the presence of God and the power of God in the praise and worship. Can you hear me okay, guys? Is the mic working? Great, thank you. So I've been sharing a little series on um, Fill Me, Holy Spirit, and and this is, you know, even though it's a short word leading into this time of of praise and worship and ministry, it's very much tied in, it fits in in this series, Um, but I'm going to try and be as brief as I can. I want to just encourage you. So I was sharing, those of you who've been here, that you have been designed perfectly by God to be the temple and the abiding place of the very Spirit of God, of His Holy Spirit. I shared that and shared how, you know, that means as you receive the Spirit in you and you walk along, you can experience that intimate and abiding presence every day, every hour, wherever you are. You are never alone. I will always be with you, even to the end of the age. God is with us always. What a wonderful reassurance that is. So that's what I've been sharing about the Holy Spirit. It is the very promise, the chief promise of God. It is, he said, God said to, in his word, I am your very great reward, myself abiding in you and living in you. Jesus himself said, I will be in them and they will be in me as I am in the Father. That oneness, that intimacy, that presence and power of God is the promise, the very great promise over and above all that we could possibly even understand or imagine in its fullness. But wow, that is the promise. So we we know that. I want to bring in a slightly new dimension today, and that is there is something very special about when we come together um, with the living Holy Spirit within us. So God is, is with us wherever we are. But he says, Jesus said, when two or more, or three, anybody in plural come together in my name, I am surely amongst you and with you. There's something special about, but hang on, you're with us anyway, Lord, when you fill me with, my Holy Spirit, with your Holy Spirit, when I'm in my chamber room, in the quiet room, in the secret place. Yes, but when two or three or more, or you gather together as the living stones full of the presence of God, there is something special Something even more, dare I say. And um, I know this is true. And um, I want to encourage you with that truth. You know, you you come across some people, don't you, who say, oh yeah, I'm a Christian, but I don't need to go to church. You know, I I believe God, but you know, I don't really like being in church. You know, the people just mm, rub me up the wrong way, blah, blah, blah. We've heard this said. And yes, we do have challenges coming together, but... The very truth is, the Word of God says that we must be together. Because when we're together, God shapes our lives using one another. God blesses us. God disciples, grows us, guides us, um, fathers us through each other. This is how... So I'm going to talk a little bit today about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. When we hear God, because God promises, I will speak, my word is very near you. When we hear God, it is generally, you know, we we, we get God's word through the word of God, but it's ministered in power through the Holy Spirit, through others. I mean, dare I say, and I will, me speaking now, bringing that word through somebody into your life, that word of power. But God says, I am giving you gifts, every one of you. Just as I'm giving you my Holy Spirit, my very presence living in you, 
I'm going to give you gifts. These will be gifts. They are my present to you, my very precious gifts to you. Have you seen that in the Bible? Do you agree that that's what... I'm not being patronizing, I'm just saying, isn't it true that God says, I have these gifts for you by my Holy Spirit? You know, we must treasure those gifts. We must thank him in a a spirit of thankfulness, obedience and openness to those gifts for us because they are essential for the body to be built up and edified, and grown, and strengthened into all that God's called us to be here in Ashford. You are part of this body. God has brought you here. Remember I shared, for such a time as this, and I said that, you know, God has designed, uh, what was the specific word um, that I'm looking for? But he's, anyway, ordained that you would live in this exact time at this day for this hour. It's in the scriptures. He placed everyone in the exact places they should live. And God has placed you here. And we'll see it again in the scripture I'm going to share in a moment. Again, reiterating that God has put all the parts of the body with all the different gifts here in the church that he's brought us to be. All the gifts of God are in this place. Whether they're being used or manifest or not, God has has given them here because he's promised that he would. And they are here. We need to release them. Why? Not because, it's not for you, I'm afraid. I need to release what's in me, not for me. It's for all of these people here because they will lose out and miss out on what God has for them if I hold on to my gift or if I say, no, I'm not going with those gifts. No, I don't, I'm not having that. You know, God really does not like that. He honestly, it, it, it kind of makes God a bit cross. It really does. Because he's looking for faith He's looking for those who trust him, who believe in him. Do you remember when he called Moses and he said, Moses, I'm calling you to speak on my behalf. I will give you the words. I will do this and, oh, but but I can't speak. I will send someone to help you and I will do, and I will empower you. Pick up this rod, look at the power, look at what I, and he still said, but oh no, send someone else. And God was angry. Come on. He said, Moses, I am with you. Come on, these are the gifts I'm giving you for my purposes and plans. So I'm not being angry. (laughs) I'm saying, God is saying, hey, let us be obedient and, and trusting in the Lord and release those gifts that are within us all. Wasn't it wonderful to be ministered to by the gifts of the Holy Spirit coming and flowing from all the worship team? Isn't it great that they are giving their gifts and standing up and they say, oh, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do. Lord, you know, there's nothing that's in me, but I'm going to stand up and I'm going to open my mouth. I'm going to strum and the glory, the presence of God comes because of the obedience, not because of who Ben is or what Ben's got in in of his own self, He would be the first to say, well, I've not got a lot, but I bring it before the Lord and bush with Ben Jay. It was wonderful. And the same, exactly the same, as Pastor Mary came up, I have a word, Ian, I just want to release that gift. And she steps forward. And, you know, there might be little voices saying, no, no, don't do it, don't do it. This is not right. I don't know what they might be. But she pushes past those with courage with faith, and releases the gift. And we are blessed. Weren't we blessed? Didn't we feel that that release? Yes, this is a new time, a new day. Thank you, Lord. And things are broken off, and the Spirit of God is released in power. This is how the power of God comes, friends. This is how the power of God is released, through the words of life. You know, these things don't kind of come flying out the wall, you know. I need, you know, I, oh Lord, I'm, I'm, I really need some finances. It comes kind of flying out the wall or falling from the ceiling. 
It, it comes with the word of power that releases and breaks off the things that are holding us back, whatever they may be, or things that are holding you back. So you see the gifts of God through the very precious Holy Spirit, the greatest gift and promise of God of himself, is in you to be released for this church, for this body. Today is not about the superstar one-man ministry up the front or anybody like that. Today is the day when the Spirit of God is released in all of the people and you rise and in your gift, in faith, in obedience, and it comes overflowing and, and the church starts overflowing and we start overflowing into Ashford and, and beyond and, and we send you in your gift and your power and you go off and you because you've been released and you're flowing in the gift not because of anything you have of course it isn't but it's the Holy Spirit in you Amen. same with not because of anything I have oh goodness me in and of myself you know I don't even want to go there but it's the Holy Spirit isn't it and we off we go and we we grow and we plant and we send and we that's the apostolic church, by the way, that Pastor David is talking about. It's you guys. You know, the apostles were sent out. Here came Paul and Barnabas. They were sent out by the church, and off they went in power. And they planted churches, and they raised churches, and those churches sent out apostles and ministries, and boom, boom. It's multiplication and acceleration. How does it happen in the power of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which are in you. Where else are they? They're not in me, just. I know you know that anyway. You know, but the gifts are here among us. Amen? Amen. Let's release them. Hallelujah. In faith. You know, didn't he say that when you drink the spirit that I give you, he said it to the woman at the well, you will not only never thirst again for your own needs and desires and wants, but you will become rivers flowing out to the people, bringing life wherever you go, flowing in your gifts, overflowing, and, and watering and bringing life in the, in the dead places and the barren places. That's you. That's the Holy Spirit in you. We release that gift. We release it in obedience. And then in that way, we are invited. Can you think of it? We're invited by the very God himself to be co-workers with him in preparing his bride. We're invited into the greatest work and the most precious work of God, which is to prepare his bride for his bridegroom, Jesus Christ. That's, your, that's the invitation that you have to prepare the bride, to help him, to, to, to come on board and be a co-laborer by releasing that spirit of God, releasing it to bring the prophetic word just like the word that came from Pastor Mary. What is the prophetic word? Well, the prophetic word is just declaring the truths of God. That's all it is. But when it's declared in power and spoken out amongst one another like this, it comes in power and it changes things. It changes the atmosphere. It changes, brings in the new into your life and into my life. Like the laying on of hands for healing, for releasing all of these things, the healing, the words of life, deliverance, and all the power of God to extend the kingdom of God. And yes, we are invited to be co-laborers with God in preparing his bride, in yes, winning the bride. That's the witnesses we call out and we, we call in those to be saved who respond and hear the call of, of Christ, the call to the bride, and they're ordained to come and respond, and they come in. And then, through our ministry, one to another, we beautify the bride through, through Christ's ministry through us. You know, Christ's ministry through us doesn't fall out of the ceiling, doesn't come out of the wall, as I keep saying. It comes through you, it comes through me. 
Isn't that exciting? Amen. Praise God. I, I'm just so excited about the, the gifts that are in this room. Amen. Right, let's, let's have a couple of scriptures and then we'll... You know, these gatherings of our worship time together, they are not a spectator activity, a spectator sport. I mean, it's not a sport, but you know what I'm saying. We don't come along and sit and let, let's be entertained. Let's watch what's happening up the front. You know, oh, let's see, let's go and see the band. And, and unfortunately, in this culture, a little bit, it can be a bit like the pop concert in the big events, can't it? You know, come and see the band, but not those who want to really participate in that time of, of worship and ministry. It's not a spectator event. We come together, and you'll see in the scriptures in a minute, and we are prepared to release the kingdom of God from within us. We come intentionally to release it, ready to release it. And we, we're saying, Lord, guide me by your Holy Spirit, and we come alongside, and whatever way it may be, it could be in this gathering like this, it could be in a gathering in your home group, life group, that's what they're for, by the way, guys. That's where you will grow in your gift, you will learn to release it, there'll be lots of opportunity for you to prophesy and speak out the words of God, and edify and bring life to people, where it might be a bit trickier in the biggest gatherings, but that's where it happens. So listen to this. This is Paul speaking to Timothy as an example of what I'm saying. Uh, so we're looking at... Oh, what did I do with it now? Oh, it's 2 Timothy 1, 6 to 9, wasn't it? Yeah, 2 Timothy 1, 6 to 9, if you want to follow it. You don't... I'm going to read it out. For this reason... This is Paul speaking to Timothy, his kind of disciple, guy that he's raised up and he's released him now into planting churches and all sorts. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Everybody has got the gifts, by the way. I'll show you in the scripture, everyone. But we have to fan into flame. Another, another um, translation is stir them up. Stir them up. We've got to get them moving. We've got to, you know, this in our natural self, in our human flesh, you know, we, we would tend to not go there. We tend to find the easy way out. But no, God says, come on, shake off that. Stir up the gift. Stir up the gift. This is God's word to us. Stir up the gift. It's not just Paul's interesting letter. He's saying, fan into flame, stir up the gift. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity or shyness or fear. He gave us a spirit of power. So, you know, there's power. He promises power and he wants to release the power through the gift. So stir it up, stir it up, let it go. Come on, be intentional. I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. I'm going to shake off every voice that's saying... No, no, Ian, no, it's not you. No, you're not good enough. No, no, you're not in the right place. No, you've not got enough experience. No, you'll just do this. No, don't you dare stand up. No, don't speak. You'll embarrass yourself. No, that's timidity, shyness, fear, all those things. Are we going to listen to those voices or are we going to obey God? He says, I don't like it when you shrink back. Step forward, trust in me. This is a great opportunity in your home groups to practice and, and you know, but practice here. So do not be ashamed, uh, what was it? For God did not give you spirit of love, but a power of love as well. That's loving. You know, we love one another through these gifts. Incredible. The, the love. And I'm going to show you another example of this very, very thing. I'm going to read, just blast out a few scriptures from a couple of chapters. If you please excuse me. I know this isn't... It would be best to go through it all. I don't have time, but I'm just going to give you an absolute sense from the Word of God about these spiritual gifts. Okay? Now, this is Paul in 1 Corinthians 12. He says, Now about spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be ignorant. This is God. This is God's Word. 
There are different kinds of gifts. I'm jumping to a few verses just to give you the sense of meaning rather than the whole thing. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit. Now to each one, that means to everyone, to each one, the manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good. To one is given through the spirit a message of wisdom. To another, the message of knowledge by the means of the same spirit. To another, faith. To another, the gifts of healing. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirits. To another, the gift of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. So these are all, can you see, the, most of these are proclamation, speaking, words kind of gifts for the edification of one another. The words are the things that have the most power in our lives. God has arranged the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. This is all in the same. God has combined the members of the body, just as he wanted them to be. You are the body of Christ. Each one of you is a part of it. Hallelujah. And then he says here, but eagerly desire the greater gifts. You know, he says, some are given prophecy, some are given this, some are given that. But hey, eagerly desire the great ones. Desire them, desire them. I'll give them to you. It's, that's the sense of it. It's, oh no, look, you don't, you didn't get one of those great gifts. You just got the, you know, putting out the chairs. And you, you just put out the, t- I'm just making a point there. You know, it's in the sense of, no, the, the gifts are for everybody. Eagerly desire them because your heavenly father wants to give you these gifts, and he loves it when you desire the gifts. Now, eagerly desire the great gifts, that's the end of chapter 12. It goes on about the gifts from 14 onwards, right in the middle there. He says, now I show you the most excellent way, and there's the whole chapter on love, yeah? That whole chapter on love is in respect to the gifts of the Spirit. Of course we see what love looks like in general, yes, But the context of the love scriptures there are the gifts. So it's saying, you know, when you prophesy, when you bring your gift, when you do this, when you do that, always in love, always gentle, always kind, always edifying, always covering a multitude of wrongs. Always, that's the gifts. We do that, and that's the loving of God. Isn't that wonderful? So, and then carrying straight on from the loving gifts, he carries on, follow the way of love and eagerly desire spiritual gifts, especially the gift of prophecy. It says again, eagerly, since you are eager to have spiritual gifts, try to excel in gifts that build up the church, that edify. When you prophesy, you edify the church because you're speaking words of life. What is prophesying? Just to say again, it's not a complicated thing. It is basically speaking the word of God. And people sometimes say, rather than necessarily foretelling the future, but it's, they say, forthtelling something of God's truth into somebody's life, and it comes in power. So the best way, if you want to prophesy into people's life, we'll, we'll get, you know, reading the Bible And the Bible will come out of you in a verse, you know, and that will just come with power. So so I could say, you know, um, let's bring a word, you know, to Ben. It would be, you know, God has chosen you, Ben. You're a chosen instrument, Ben. You didn't choose yourself. God has chosen you, brother. And, And, you know, that's just something from the Bible, isn't it? We know the Bible says we are chosen. But when I speak it by the Spirit in the power, and Ben's sitting there thinking he may have had a time where, you know, he was under some attack, and he's thinking, I don't know about, you know, the worship ministry. Should I, should I concentrate on, um, you know, the nursing career? And I'm not saying anything about this, but I, I'm giving an example. And then that someone comes up and says, Ben, you are chosen instrument of my power, something like that. And he hears, yes, Lord. I've had the direction from God. I've had, this is how God moves in power. I'm going to quickly share an example from my own life, if I may. I know I'm going over my time, but honestly, I think it gives just some encouragement and illustration. 
You know, Rachel and I, we visited ACF many years ago. Rachel was brought up in ACF, and we met in London, etc., etc. And we were visiting when Pastor David had just started, in fact. You know, the new pastor, maybe we thought, oh, let's go and, you know, hear him out and, and what have you. We were living in New Romney, and we came along just visiting. And as we were listening to Pastor David preach, I really sensed the Holy Spirit speak the words, you know, in my spirit, I want you here under this man. It was just like that. I want you here under this man. And, ooh, strange. Um, but anyway, it wouldn't go away. It wouldn't go away. And, and, and um, we followed that. You know, there were more um, confirmations. We were in agreement. And we came to the church. And then I remember going to a small life group. And Alison, in fact, Alison Hill was leading the group at the time. And she stepped out in faith again I mean, she could have thought, you know, well, I'm going to look really stupid here. But she didn't. She, she, she got a word from God, and she stepped out to me, and she laid the hands on me, and she said, Ian, you know, you're not sure why you're here, something like that, but God's brought you here, and he's going to show you what you should do in the next seven days, she said. Now, she really stepped out and said that, and I was sort of, wow. You know, so we're thinking, yes, Lord, because we didn't know quite what we were going to do in ACF. And, and so I was there, I was working, I was a manager of a nursing home, and Rachel was busy, blah, blah, blah. And Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whenever it was, it was coming right to the end of the week. It was the Sunday, the seven days was just about up, and there was a call from the front of the church, we are recruiting for the schools team. Um, it was, generally, it was people, gap years, students, etc. I was married, had a house, you know, was in a job, had the children and everything, and, you know, was not the kind of person they were necessarily looking for, but I felt, this is it. This is that thing that Alison had, had laid hands on and said, I will show you what to do. And I went forward to the, to the leaders, and I said, I believe that, you know, I'm to be on the schools team, even though I've got a full-time job, and et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, and they challenged it and, and whatnot, but we stepped forward with the word, and the word to me that was confirmed by the prophetic word. And so I joined the schools team. Within a few short months, Pastor David, I joined the schools team, hadn't really spoken to him particularly at length. I, he didn't know about that word, I want you here under this man, didn't say a word. But he phoned me up at home. He said, you know, Ian, how would you feel about being the youth pastor? Or was a full-time youth leader at the time. And, and I said, well, yes, I believe that's, that's God. And, and I came, joined the church. And I was under him, you know, day in, day out, in the office, day in, day out, ministering and working. Can you see how the prophetic word accelerated and moved and released me? That's how the prophetic, the individual prophetic word. But it's so, if, if Alison hadn't given me that word, I wonder, would I have joined the schools team? In my normal mind, I probably wouldn't. I said, well, no, that's not for me. That's for the students or whatever. But just an example, guys. But uh, thank you for listening about the release of the gifts. Because God has a gift, many gifts in you that he's releasing for the body, number one, to strengthen us and cause us to be a mighty apostolic church that will affect the nation and the nations Without the release of your gift, it will not happen. In the sense of in us and in you. Because you are the gift of God to ACF. And the gifts that God's put in you are the gifts to ACF. Amen. Thank you for watching our service. If you'd like to watch last week's service, click over here. And don't forget to subscribe. God bless you.